So hopefully you're at a point now where your design is finalized. You have all the colors on there. You have a nice file with, um, uh, you, you can have art everywhere, but as long as in your artboard you have your final design. Um, I'm going to show you how to separate the colors and create different layers and pick certain colors for it, uh, calling out the, the Pantones and getting it ready and set up with indicators and um, printing technique callouts for the printer so that when they receive the file, they're not calling you for questions or you get the shirt in the mail because the printer was lazy then they call you and you know it wasn't what you want it to be so trying to get everything laid out so it's it's a, it's a language that you got to speak and so when they receive this they understand the language and there's no there's no errors so we're almost there so thanks for sticking around and i can't wait to see what you guys have come up with so where we left off i was working on this hypnotist design and I have completed it and I still have all my files um, and elements they're all they're all separate so we still got a little cleaning up to do um, and what you want to do now if you're working in Illustrator to get it ready for the printers is to uh, merge all your colors together so that you can separate them afterwards and how I do that is I highlight my artboard, um, leaving the background where it is. And so you can see uh, there's, still, there's still black here, all that. And so since, on, since it's on a black t-shirt, we're going to get rid of all the black. So the shirt basically just comes down to two colors rather than three. The shirt is the third color. So I'll just lock the back layer. I'm going to highlight it. And I like to do Object, um, Expand Appearance. And just do that a few times. It will ask you to um, expand Fill in the Stroke. Oops. And try it again. Just do that a few times, just to make sure. <laughs> so I think we're good. And then, i oh, bring in my tools. Okay, so from here, you're gonna wanna bring out your Pathfinder tool which is found in Window Pathfinder. I took it away, bring it back up. Um, it's right here. And I grab the third option to the right, which is Merge. And, but, but before I do that, I have this gradient right here that I need to be mindful of. And so it fades to black, it fades into the shirt color. So the way I, um, I isolate it is I make a color totally different from everything else so I can pull it up later. And here's one thing I just need to be careful of. Make sure it's behind some colors. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to highlight everything except for the gradient, un unselect that, and then merge it all. So now everything is one image. All the elements have been merged together and you can easily highlight them. So it's all broken down by colors now. So I can highlight this black um, because as you can see, if I move it over here, the black is still there. So I'm gonna wanna highlight that to get rid of it. There's this one and that one. And just press delete. Actually, I'm going to merge it with, okay. So delete the blacks, because you want the black to be your shirt color. And so now you have this, which is two color, but plus three with the blue. Now with this blue is, I need to make it transparent, so what I do is I make it green, and I take that, and I copy and paste it on top. No, nope, not yet. Um, so I copy it, and I uh, in here I make a clipping mask, and I paste it back over it. And with once I'm in clipping mask, I can take a gradient, 
and when you're in clippy mask, uh, black and white is um, transparent or, or opaque. And from there, I can adjust to fit what I had before. Just somewhere along there, I want it to fade out near the top, but still have enough green with everything else. So that's that's a good amount. So then, once I'm in there, I go back into my opacity mask. So therefore, as you can see, it fades to nothing, to transparent. And that's a good place to be. So from here, you're going to want to separate your color layers. And you pull out the magic wand tool and just highlight what, whatever your color is, if it's green first. And what I do is I command C, A, uh, C, I copy it and delete it. And I make a new layer and I just uh, command F, paste it back on. And then I would do that for the other color too. And then paste it there. So now my colors are separated. And I have my shirt color on one layer. And you would label each layer accordingly. So shirt color, black. And then this is like an off-white. And the most tr um, the thing that you need here is a Pantone book. And I use the Pantone color bridge uh, coded series which is like one of the best to use for t-shirt colors that's what they that's what all the printers go by so that is essential um, if you're gonna if you have your own t-shirt brand or uh, if you're making posters or you're making t-shirts it's the universal color language for printers and I have here a um, a file that has the colors on it. So I did 7487 for the green. I looked up in my um, in my Pantone book and so label that. So now that you have your design with your colors separated it's time to put it into the tech pack and then the tech pack is another like universal language that printers will use a as a guide for how they are going to print your shirt and you know if you have it all in the tech pack and you you know you dot your i's cross your t's anything wrong is on the printers <laughs> so it's just um, a way to ensure that your shirt is coming out the way that you want it to so just you take your design and I have included a, a tech pack um, template for you to check out. And basically, um, you can use this for if you're working freelance and sending it to a company, a t-shirt brand, or if it's, your, if it's your own brand, this, this is a good template to give to your printers um, and that they can get used to. So it breaks it down into your shirt design and you just place your design right here where this little orange circle is that I put for a placeholder. And then if you have a back print, it's good to give them just a rundown of it. And so the next page was your color specs and you would write down the shirt color and who makes it if it's like American Apparel or uh, whoever you're using, put that style number there. Um, each each shirt should have its own. And and if you don't know, if you're just doing it for a client, and they're and they have their own way to do it, then just leave it blank. But make sure you have the shirt color there. And then for your front graphic, you'd fill in all how many colors you have. Um, each one of these is a group, so. I would just use um, the direct selection tool and highlight those and you know just fill in the colors as you need them. And this is where you put your Pantone 
numbers uh, corresponding to each color. And so your front graphic, oh, this should be back graphic. And then down here, you would specify if it's going to be plastisol, light plastisol, and discharge. And what that is, that is how the printers will print your shirt. Um, in the lesson, I've, I've highlighted what the difference is between each one. And plastisol is basically printed onto the shirt with a white underbase. It's a heavier ink. You can feel it more. Um, the colors pop and it doesn't fade so it's good for longevity or if you have a really bright design and it can work on almost any um, shirt color. Uh, light Plastisol is similar but it's just a little thinner uh, it won't be as heavy as Plastisol so but it, it's also um, susceptible to fading and discharge is really good if you want a vintage feel or if you want the graphic to just feel like it's part of the shirt and not printed on top of the shirt. And what they do is that they replace the dye and they dye it into the shirt. Um, I like Plastisol for, for many reasons, just because I like a nice faded feel and um, it just feels better while wearing it. And Discharge only works for darker colors, so it won't work for like a bright blue. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. And then from here, you would put any special notes, um, anything like glow in the dark ink, or if um, something's being sewed on, or whatever you have that is just beyond the ordinary printing color onto a t shirt, you would use uh, specify whatever you want there. And over here is the men's screen. And this is where you would uh, place your graphic for uh, just just for placement. Um, you need to edit how far you want the graphic to start. 1.5 is a good um, uh, position for shirts to start at. And then here you would specify um, the sizing. So from a small to large t-shirt, maybe your graphic is 11.5 inches wide. Uh, and then from extra large to 3x, you, you bump it up because why you do that, if you were to print the small screen onto an, a 3x shirt, that shirt uh, or that graphic is going to be so small that it's just going to look really, really awkward. So you want to adjust the size accordingly to each shirt size. And the same thing for women's, except if you're doing women's cuts, the graphic has to be smaller because of the way that the shirt is cut, the way that um, it curves on on a woman and um, it's just a lot thinner. So you adjust it, um, usually it's like an inch or two less. Um, that's how I, that's how I um, adjust mine. And then the back design, whatever your, um, whatever your design is, um, this one is, say you have like a logo that you put it at the top. Um, that's, this is where you would put it. Or if you're doing uh, a shirt with a big back print, you know, you would blow it up. So give, give them a reference size. So this would probably be around like three inches wide. And I would mostly use that as the universal one. So I wouldn't, um, I would just make this two, three XL. And your inside design, um, some people have tags or some people have a printed label. And if, say, you're doing a collaboration with the company or you want to give a little more information about your garment and you don't want to buy tags, you can print on the, on the inside of the shirt, like right below um, the, the seam. And then you would just specify how wide that is, put your art there, um, just like all the other ones. And your other, if you have any kind of special thing, um, maybe there's something hidden beneath the shirt, or this is where you put like a sleeve design, whatever you want, um, just, just specify, um, add a text layer, and write print on right sleeve 
uh, for guys and girls. It's just give them an outline of what you want. So from here, I'm going to take my design and I am going to place it into the tech pack. It doesn't matter um, how big it is or how big your file is because the size is going to be um, determined by what you write, not the, the image that you place. So don't worry about that. And then I also have a back design for this for Johnny Cupcakes. We like to um, give, it, give it a little customization, uh, make it fun, and make the logo on the back of the shirt relate to the front. So I put that there for placement. And then I would just go ahead and delete these and just carry this uh, graphic over. Give it a rough estim estimate. And then I take the back design. It's not going to be that big. Maybe this will be about 375 instead because I want the logo to be around two, two and a half inches wide. And we don't have an inside print, so I can just leave that. And we don't have any extra um, printing or sleeve design, so it's pretty basic. And then you go ahead and fill in the colors. And I just take the eyedropper tool and I would pick the two colors I'm using. Back graphic is one color. Inside graphic, none. And so we have, we have off-white here. And what do we put for that? We have 7487. Seven. Also, with discharge, the colors won't be as true to the Pantone number. So, if you're looking in your Pantone swatch, it's probably going to be 15% less of that color when you're doing discharge. But Plastisol should be most of the time 100% true to Pantone color. We're going to print it on black. Um, I can delete that because I don't have any special notes. Um, if you were doing light Plastisol, just check that off. But since we're doing discharge, I'm leaving that black. And so Everything looks good to me. You can go ahead and fill in um, your name. So this is me. The companies for Johnny Cupcakes. This is the the hypnotist shirt. And it is for spring 2013. So then from here, you can go ahead and just copy and paste that on each page. This is just for reference in case you were to print this out and, and each page got lost. So. a little tedious, but that's what we do. Okay, you got your shirt ready to go, and then just save this out and send it to the printer in a Illustrator or a PDF file.
and, and they should be able to grab everything and everything should be secure. Say you designed your your shirt in Photoshop or you did a more hand-drawn approach and you didn't, you didn't make it in Illustrator, then there's really nothing different. Uh, you're just using a different program. You still tech pack it the same way. Uh, you still separate your colors the same way you did in Illustrator, labeling each each layer um, to their color. Uh, I don't have my Pantone book on me right now, so I'm just labeling them yellow and red, and when I have that, I will adjust it. So this is almost ready to go. I've, I've put each color on a different layer, but as you'll see here, there's some weird um, pixel color um, jarring effect happening. And that usually happens with Photoshop because you're dealing with pixels rather than, than uh, vectors. And so to fix that, we're going to have to do a technique called trapping. And trapping is basically expanding one color region over into another so that there is less chance of misregistration and effects like these happening in your final print. So what I would do is, since this is going to be, um, since the yellow is going to be printed on top of the white, because usually um, you print your lighter colors first, I would highlight the yellow and I know that I don't need this, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I don't need this. Because I really just want that circle of the yellow, that little yokey looking yellow circle. So now I have this area selected, I'm going to go back into the white layer. I'm going to go to select, modify, and contract. What that's going to do is going to shrink the pixel radius a bit more um, into the white. So it's going to take this and bring it in more. So if I do that, you'll see, you know, it's now that it's not against the edge. It's just three pixels in. So I can take uh, a white brush and select the color. And now, as you see, I'm painting in that layer a bit. And it's only going to paint those three pixels because that those little marching ants are going to um, stop it from painting inside the yellow. So as you see, this is what it was, and this is it. So I trapped it a little bit, and now there's no jarring effect. Pretty cool. So in this part, I'm going to show you this shirt render that I've created for you guys to mock up your shirts on, to show a client, or to create a line sheet for your own brand to really get the, um, the impact of how your shirt's going to look when it's finally printed onto the shirt. Um, so you would just take your graphic and copy uh, and paste that into Photoshop. And over here I have created this layer called Artwork. And you want to just paste it above that. And then you'll have to adjust the size accordingly. And so obviously that doesn't look right. So over here is a layer called Shirt Color. And that's locked and an easy way or it's um, it has a transparent pixel. So the best way to change the color on this, to make it really easy, is to um, use your slider or find a color and then do Alt or Option Delete. And that changes the color in a transparent locked uh, layer. And then I can make it any color I want, um, try it out to see what works for it. But I know since I use a dark color as part of the image, it needs to be printed on a dark color. So anything lighter won't work. It could go on a dark blue, but not really feeling that. A navy, a navy might work. 
or a deep purple but it won't work on red it won't work on yellow obviously so I know it will work on black <laughs> and if you make it all the way black it might be too dark so you can just lower the opacity just a bit or bring up the colors and if you're doing this for a client um, ask them what kind of shirts they're printing their stuff on and if they can supply you with a color list um, because if not you can go online or ask what um, what manufacturer they're using and usually on that website you can find their color numbers or how many colors they have in that style and you can just sort of create your own swatches from that um, I work a lot with American Apparel so um, they they supply a good list of colors that you can check out. So if you then want to take this shirt and put it into a bigger document, you can take out the background so it's transparent and crop it to just have the front of the shirt, but I also supply the back of the shirt for you to check out as well. Um, and then you just use that uh, for your own shirts and um, play around with it. I know it will help your design a little bit more. Um, and sometimes I place the design in there halfway done, so I kind of I kind of I can understand where it's relating on the shirt. I can if the type looks really weird at that angle on a shirt, then I can know beforehand before I go and finish it and realize it's a crappy shirt. I can adjust it so it looks a little better. So this rendering file is very helpful um, when you're stuck in a direction for your shirt or you're looking at your line sheet and you're saying that you really need a blue color in your spring line. Then you can design accordingly to that. 